Hello there and good morning. Poland is having a grand old time needling its Brussels overlords. As per usual, please like, subscribe and comment below. And when subscribing, please do press that little bell, but also select the All option, or you won't get any notifications when I publish a new video. The Polish Prime Minister Matthias Morawiecki has claimed that the EU is working to make Poland a mere province of a greater European Union. Well, that's one more country that has woken up and smelt the coffee. And this stems from the Polish government changing its internal law on how judges are appointed. And Brussels does not like these changes, as they claim it interferes with the independence of the Polish judiciary. Brussels is saying that these amendments by Poland strike at the very heart of the EU's rule of law. This led to the EU Commission threatening to take action against Poland, thus sparking a massive spat. And just recently, the now not-so-independent judiciary in Poland ruled that Polish law is superior to EU law. Which meant that as far as Poland is concerned, they can do as they please while thumbing their nose at Brussels. And this has got the EU Commission in a right old tiz, with the EU Commission saying that it will punish Poland by threats of withholding from it EU taxpayer money and or EU membership rights, such as voting. And EU Commission President Ursula von der Leyen was strutting about the EU Parliament stage in Strasbourg saying, This ruling calls into question the foundations of the European Union. It is a direct challenge to the unity of the European legal order. We cannot and we will not allow our common values to be put at risk. The Commission will act, she barked, with the obvious intention of bringing Poland to the EU's heel. And the Foreign Affairs Minister of Luxembourg, Jean Asselborn, said that the EU would not stomach the end of the rule of law, and if Poland was able to win this struggle, Europe will die from such a development, he said. But for his part, the Polish PM, who was also sat there in the same chamber, hit back saying that the Commission and EU member state attacks on his country were biased and unfair, and also said that the EU is a great achievement of the states in Europe. It is a powerful economic, political and social alliance. It is the strongest, most developed international organisation in history. But the EU is not a state. He also said that Poland rejects the language of threats and blackmail. It is not acceptable to force on others decisions which have no legal basis, and it is even less acceptable to use the language of financial blackmail. I will reject the language of threats, he said. And he basically said that the EU was exceeding the powers given to it under EU treaty law and that Poland could overrule those excesses. While the arch-federalist MEP and former Prime Minister of Belgium, Guy Verhofstadt, berated the Polish Prime Minister for using the language of Brexiteers. Now von der Leyen is under pressure to go beyond mere words and to act, with one Dutch MEP saying it is a sacking job if she doesn't get on with it. The European Commission must do whatever it takes to halt the destruction of the rules of law. Anything else would be a dereliction of duty and would merit the ultimate political consequence, they said. The Poles really have stirred a pot there, haven't they? And the questioning of EU law and its primacy seems to be spreading. In a very recent debate between French presidential hopefuls hoping to win next May's elections, the current president, Emmanuel Macron, said that his rivals should not be questioning EU law. It's an old French disease, said Macron, going on to say EU law should be supported, not questioned. 
Let's hope this questioning spreads a lot further and keeps the Eurocrats too busy punishing its own member states instead of trying to kick Brexit UK. The question now is how far is Poland willing to go to enforce the ruling of its new judiciary that Polish law is superior to EU law? Because the Polish people, it seems, are still wedded to the idea of EU membership. And the Polish Prime Minister has stated that talk of a potential Polexit is mere lies. So would the Polish government really put itself in the position of having EU taxpayer cash withheld from it? Or will it quietly buckle under the pressure? Now, Poland has been at loggerheads with the EU Commission for quite some time, and former UK MEP Nigel Farage said on Facebook back in March 2018, I hope the Polish people continue to rebel against the EU. The bully boys in Brussels want to take away their democratic rights within the Union. And just yesterday, he said on his GB News slot that... Here is the headmistress, the unelected headmistress, telling the Poles what they can do. Isn't the level of condescension just something quite extraordinary? And of course, the Poles who lived under communism until just 30 years ago are beginning to say we have had enough of this. And the Prime Minister has responded by saying that we're being blackmailed, we're being starved. And whilst he hasn't directly threatened that Poland will leave, the threat there is implicit. The Poles are not happy. The Hungarians are not happy. There is a giant cultural divide between Western Europe and Central Europe, and it's something that is not going to go away in a hurry. And as he said, some of those former enforced USSR countries know exactly what being dictated to by a foreign power looks and feels like. Now, the UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson says that the UK will be like Qatar. I didn't know his human rights beliefs stretched in that particular direction. But before I get into that, I just want to say a massive thank you to all my super thanks, Patreon and PayPal supporters, as well as those that do buy a mug with my mug on it. Links in the descriptions box below. You really do help me keep this channel going. So Boris has unveiled his new, new, new green agenda and said that the UK will be the Qatar of hydrogen presumably relating UK hydrogen fuel potential as akin to Qatari energy reserves. How ironic that he talks in those terms about hydrogen when the UK is sat on huge gas fields. But while Boris has been effusing and is all effervescent about his plans for a green UK, the Treasury isn't as equally enamoured to them. All the bean counters see is mounting costs to put all the energy pumps, electric cars and wind power plans in place, but also a very significant reduction in tax take as money from things like fuel duty start drying up, with The Telegraph reporting, new taxes will be needed to make Britain net zero in carbon emissions by 2050, the Treasury warned on Tuesday, as it opened the door to extra levies on motorists and gas bills. And the Daily Mail reported that Boris Johnson yesterday unveiled his plan for turning Britain green by 2050, but was warned by the Treasury that taxes and consumer costs could rise to cover the estimated £1 trillion bill. And further, that the Treasury is warning that this could lead to inflation and higher taxes. Being like Qatar could be expensive for Green UK, couldn't it? So what's your opinion on Poland versus the EU and the UK as the Qatar of hydrogen? Please like and comment below.